The Red Shoes has a number of missteps, among them opening the show with a scene from Swan Lake featuring the great music of Tchaikovsky. Compared to that, the musical's original tunes fall far short. Also, the play ends with a ballet version of Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tale, The Red Shoes. That classic story only points up the glaring flaws in the musical's own dull book. But The Red Shoes does shine visually, and if you close your ears, it's a stunning treat. The dancing in the show is superb, and if they'd left it as a ballet, I'd probably be giving the show a rave. Margaret Illman is the beautiful ballerina. Victoria Page is a wonder to behold. This principal ballerina with the National Ballet of Canada in real life could easily hold the show on her own. The Red Shoes is actually two shows in one, a lovely dance concert that soars, and a dreadfully standard musical that is utterly earthbound. That half of the show features mediocre acting, forgettable tunes, and some of the corniest writing this side of Kansas. I do make the exception of George de la Pena as Lou Boff, the dance master. He's a triple threat, equally accomplished as a dancer, singer, and actor. The story, as in the movie, involves the grand ambition of a young ballerina who equates dance with life itself. She catches the eye of an exacting impresario, Boris Lermontov, who runs a ballet company, and quickly becomes its star. She falls in love with a struggling young composer and at the end is tragically torn between her love of dance and her young lover. I find it hard to understand how the Red Shoes got so flat-footed, considering the talents involved. Julie Stein's songs hit sour notes, though his ballet compositions are quite lovely. Marsha Norman's book is utterly lifeless, ranging from dull to deadly, and Steve Barton as Lermontov behaves like a priggish James Mason with a hemorrhoid problem, though he sings majestically. She puts on the enchanted shoes, and she dances like no one has ever seen before. Besides the dancing, I have only praise for the technical designs. Heidi Landisman's gorgeous painted sets and Catherine Zuber's classy costumes suggest a much grander production than the rest of the staff delivers. Choreographer Lara Lubavitch is as much a star of the Red Shoes as its lead performers, in fact, more so. His closing ballet suggests what could have been a stylish and haunting production. Instead, what we mostly got was standard Broadway fare with music and story that simply fails to sing. I'm Roma Torrey, and that's a wrap for New York One.